Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, your host of In the Kitchen with Bonnie. This week we are pleased to bring you the second of a new series in the Cellar by Marquis Selections. We are in the wine room here at the Gaslight Grill and with me is one of the owners of Marquis Selections, Chris Cribb. Chris, thank you for inviting us into your cellar. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the wines of Portugal. Yes. But before we begin doing this, let's talk a little bit about Marquis Selections. How you came to be and the concept for what you do. Okay, sure Bonnie. Well, thank you for having us. Uh, we're excited to be in partnership with you guys in, uh, in the kitchen. Good food needs good wine, uh, I so guess. I yep. think this is a good, uh, good marriage. Uh, and thanks to the Gaslight Grill for letting us uh, work in this beautiful little cellar. Um, Marquis Selections started about eight years ago. Um, we've got a couple partners in Kansas City here that um, one of them was a wine collector mm -hmm. and um, we were working uh, in operations in Australia looking for new business development and the, um, the thing that we found was a lot of small wineries that could not come to the United States by themselves. The market is very, they're very tight, there's a lot of um, big players and small players, not a lot of people in the middle. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we put together a group of those small wineries from Australia and developed our own brand of wines, Marquis Australian Wines, which um, we have uh, and still grow uh, the business every day. And from there, we developed a nationwide network of wholesalers and distributors that help to bring our products to market. Um, the focus for us has changed over the last couple of years where we've moved from just one winery in Australia to working with several wineries in different regions. We've got eight different producers, and the thing that ties them all together is that they have this real green, sustainable, organic uh, passion for their wine making. And, I, and it is a common thread for the chefs and the rent restaurant tours that we work with, this devotion to organic and sustainable. And, and I think it is, um, not only good business, but to care for the earth that for the future generations, and we can still eat and drink very well doing that. Yes, I, I really think that the the, the test has, has really been shown that if you do things correctly, and you are the shepherd, whether it's with the food that you're making or the wines that you're creating, and you shepherd it in with, with care and without the pesticides, herbicides, any of that stuff, that, uh, that you can have a great product. You so, can have a great product. We've got, we've got a couple new ones here for All you right, today. Let's to, talk to about show. Portugal. What part of Portugal? Why this winery? Sure. Um, we decided to get involved with Portugal two years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we are working with um, a winery, two different wineries, and a group called Wines and Winemakers by Savin. Mm -hmm. The wines are, uh, we have a Clemen, it's a Vino Verde, and we have a, um, a red blend, uh, Duro, which is called Lua Nova. Okay. And these two wines um, and the winemakers that we're working with are focused on trying to do things with, with old vines. Mm. And specifically, um, the, the products themselves are um, handcrafted, estate grown, single vineyard products. So when we, when we found what we were looking for, uh, we decided that um, the other thing about Portugal is Port Portugal has been known for, for port, port, yes, <laughs> for, port. Okay. for many, many years. And these two wines you'll see are not port; they no, are they're not. table wines. So we were wines. surprised they're table wines. Okay. So, and the the, the thing that uh, Portugal, the winemaking tradition there, has been able to do is they always made their own table wines; they just didn't export them. Uh -huh. And so now this is the the best of the best we found in. Uh, looking at table wines that are for everyday drinking and you'll find in the red wine for example there are some of the 23 varietals that they use in making port mm -hmm. they're now just making table wines out of Triga Franca is one of the main grapes that's in this red wine and it that is it's a uh, rich smell yeah it's very rich mm. it's got a kind of a powerful nose mm -hmm. it's got some of that bright dark fruit you know more like the um, Cassis, uh, a little bit more like um, blueberries. Uh, the, the Portuguese wines are made in a little more dry style. Um, people talk about uh, old world and new world. Okay. Uh, old world um, refers basically to Europe and uh, the, the continental 
countries like France, Spain, Portugal included, and their, their winemaking tends to be a little bit, um, a little bit more earthy. Mm -hmm. And New World is basically California. everybody else. In <laughs> California, <laughs> you know, Australia, and so, th those are more fruity wines. So these are a little bit more, um, a little more minerally, a little, a little, um, a little bit more earthy. What would you pair with this red wine? So this red wine, uh, like I said, a blend of Trigo Franca, Tinta Roriz, um, a number of other grapes that I can't pronounce. Okay, um, but, but they're I would, in there. Yeah. yeah, I would pair this with, mm. you know, something something pretty substantial. Wonderful. You know, like a red meat. <laughs> yes, a red meat. You know, something like a. You could do barbecue steak. with this. You could. You? you could do barbecue. Yeah, you know, as a, as a man from Kansas City, I love my barbecue. Yep, so got, you know, yep. I, I'd say that barbecue would be able to fit there. I think that you could even even go as much as trying to do it with like a, I, I like this with like a real dry cheese, you know, like and a... And yeah. what about like a blue cheese or a stronger cheese, would you do that? Yeah, a blue cheese would stand up to it as well. Okay. Um, you know, I, I love really, really fresh or, or aged cheddar, oh, um, you know, that would be an interesting one there as well. That. Um, but that's, uh, that's the red wine and okay. um, the region that that comes from mm -hmm. uh, is the Douro. The Douro is a, um, if you think of Spain and Portugal as the Iberian Peninsula mm -hmm. altogether, uh, Portugal runs along the eastern coast, right. and the Douro River is the river that runs through Porto, where they made used to make port, yes. and it runs inward, and the, the Douro region is where the, I believe, the best table red wines are made in, in all of uh, Portugal. So next we have the white, white. wine, okay. and this what do is we have the here? Clemen Vino Verde. It oh, is a Reserva, beautiful. and it is the 2009 vintage. It mm -hmm. has a blend of Trejadura and Alvarino. I'm not familiar with any of these grapes, and, it, and it's a very unique nose for a white wine. Yes, it's it's got a very bright nose. It's got yeah. um, like apricot to it. It's got apricot a little bit of peach to it. Um, what we find is that Vino Verde is the region. It's the highest. The the most northern region in all of Portugal. There's that little mm -hmm. bit that comes out of Spain, right above it, and, and what Spain makes right there are wines called Albarino. So the grape Albarino and the grape Alvarino are the same, just two different uh, wine, -making. wine making practices because mm -hmm. of the different countries. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what this is. The the Clemen is also and Vino Verde is also a little lighter. Mm -hmm. They do it with um, a little lighter alcohol. So this is about 11% alcohol. You know, you go to your, your regular store, most of your wines you're gonna find between 12 and a half to 14. Big reds are 15 plus, but you know, so this, that's a little Less. bit lighter. Okay, and so what temperature for both of these? You would serve the red at? The red I would do um, right at just a little chill off room temperature. Um, okay. You know, it's, it's big enough, it's bold enough that it, um, is something that uh, it could, that it would take a little bit of that alcohol um, hotness out of it. The, the white, um, right at um, you know fridge temperature, uh, you know I'd be going pretty that cold. forty. Keep it pretty cold. It's um, it's just going to be light and crisp. And and what you'll find is it, as it gets a little warmer, it will get a little bigger in your mouth. And um, this wine has a little bit of what they call frizzante, mm -hmm. which is just a little tiny bubble. You'll, you'll get that feel like, um, oh. just like a little bit of, like when you have a, a soda. Yeah. Um, it does. You just get it on the tip of your tongue where it, it kind of tickles I your tongue. That. So that's one of the uh, the hallmarks of Vino Verde. And what would, you, what would you serve the Verde with? Oh, I, I think this is a great fish wine. Fish. You know, there I think go. that it, it would be uh, lovely to stand up to almost anything in that realm. Um, I like to I like to, eat, to drink this uh, with a lot of different um, big healthy salads too. Uh, I think that uh, anything with some fruit in the salad would be nice for this because this is it likes fruit. It likes fruit. It likes fruit. Um, and then the the red wine, you know, I think the the Lua Nova would be it's, it's big. It's ready for that steak. You know, it's got um, it's got something that needs a needs boldness. a little boldness to it. Yeah. Boldness to it. Uh, I think the the other thing that I've I've really found that that goes really well with um, with the Portuguese reds is um, like a caramelized nuts and cheese plate um, is is also one of the things that they delicious. always serve uh, in, in Portugal. So. Caramelized and also a little bit spicy. It, yeah. You could do that. You could do that too. Well, you've 
taken a great deal of care to create this portfolio. Wine Spectator has given your group of wines the highest marks at the best value in the last five years. How did you do that? Well, we, um, we've done a, a vigorous process in selection and we decided we're not going to just take anything. And uh, we, we bring in the candidate wines that we're looking at. We go through a blind tasting process where every one of the wines is tasted against what we consider the best in the, in the neighborhood. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. the best the, that our local wine store would say, this is the best Portuguese Vino Verde out there. We put it right next to the Clemen and we have to beat that wine. And so that really gives us a validation that, you know, it, if it didn't beat it, then we need to go find another one. So, we, so we've kept uh, looking for that, and we also look for wineries and regions and areas that are hot. And Portugal, uh, with, the, with the economy in, in Spain and Portugal being a little lower, the dollar goes a long way over there oh, these days. Yep. So, you know, that's why the, the, the real values jump out of the box. That we're enjoying. How can our viewers and listeners learn more about Marquee Selections? Well, Marquee Selections, uh, the, the Green Global Grapes portfolio is available um, in local retail shops, so all around the city. Mm -hmm. um, what we also have is a great website, uh, www.marquee.com, and um, you can look us up there. It's got all of the wines, more of the wine education and information with uh, food and wine pairings. We um, we're available on phone by at 888-M-A-R-Q-U-E-E, 888-627-7833, Marquee. And, and also um, on your website, uh, you can find a store that carries the Marquee wines that's near you. Yes, yes, yes. We've got a section that shows and is dedicated to our local retailers and restaurants so that you can find out exactly where these are at. And if not, you can send us an email at info at Marquee and say, this is where I go, this is where Marquee needs to be. Okay. Well, thank you very much for inviting us into your cellar. Uh, we will invite you back to the cellar next week when we take a look at the wines from Spain.